Góðan daginn, Ingólfur Rétti og kemur frá Eflingu Stefnafélagið. Er starfsmaður á kjaramálasjöði þar og þá einna helst í kringum almenna geiran eða það sem stengar ekki fyrirtæki. Ég ætla að fara svona almennt yfir hvers konar brotur er helst í veitingabransan sem við erum að glíma við hverju sinni og hérna og svo fáum við náttúrulega sögunar þeirra þá eftir sem að fylgja því. Helstu brot almennt séð í veitingageiranum eru það er ekki verið að gera ráningasamninga, það er ekki verið að borga í yfirvinnu, það er ekki verið að greiða vetra fyrir fyrir starfsmann sem eru ráningar í vaktavinnu og þeir eru jafnvel ráningar til vaktavinnu og það er engi ráningasamninga gerðir og það er nú þannig í kjarasamningnum að það á að gera ráningasamning innan tökja mánaði þegar starf byrjar og ef að starfsmenn eru ráningar í vaktavinnu þá skal það gert strax og það eru þessi brot sem við helst verið að brjóta á starfsfólki það er ekki verið að greiða þeim þau laun sem þau eiga að hafa með þau kjarasamninga svo eru alls kynns brot sem koma í ofanálag fólki láti vinna miklu lengri vaktur heldur ná að vera að vinna það er jafnvel skipulega vakt í átta klukkutíma og svo er fólki sem þeim eftir þrjá og það er bara greitt fyrir þess að þrjá tíma en að vaktin átt að vera átta tímar við erum mjög oft erum við að sækja hvíldatíma, kaffitíma og bara laun sem eru almennt ekki greitt fyrirtækin fara í kennutöluflakk það er nú bara almennt yfir allan geiran en fyrst og fremst í veitingageiranum er þetta hvað alvarlegast að eitt daginn þá kemur nýr aðurnurikand inn og opnar veitingastað ræðu til sinn fullt af starfsfólki gerir miklar og stóra breytingar á veitingastaðnum svo er hann farin í þrót tveim ánum setna og opnar svo inn á sama stað nákvæmlega aftur nýtt fyrirtæki nýtt kennitala og þá þurfa starfsmenn að leita til okkar til þess að sækja þau laun sem voru búnir að vinna inn á þessum tveim ánum og þá þurfum við að sækja þau það er ekkert til í þrótabúna því það er búið að færa allt annað yfir á aðra kennitölur þá fer það til ábyrðis og launa sem aðurnurekandi nendar á því að borga og við hinn í sköttunum okkar þau brot sem að koma inn á borði hjá okkur í þessu er náttúrulega varandi vinnutíman eins og ég fór yfir á hann og réttindin hjá fólkinu og við höfum farið alla þá leið að við höfum stemt fyrirtækjum í gjaldrot ef þau hafi ekki staðið skil og greittu laun sem að á að greiða og þetta er þessa launakröfu sem gerum almennt eru á 7 til 700 eins og 6 til 700 launakröfur á hverju ári og þá einna helst í veitningabransanum og það eru hátt já, örgulega annað til 300 sem að fara alla leið dóm eða eru stöðu rétt á þeim að fara inn til dómstóla það sem okkur finnst hvað súrast í þessu það er erlendi vinnuafl sem kemur hingað til lands og er að vinna það verður helst fyrir barðin á þessu að því það þekkir ekki rétt sinn og jafnvel er hrætt af vinnuveitandanum ef þú færð þarna þá þekkið þessa menn þeir gera ekkert fyrir þig skilurðu það er bara svona er þetta á Íslandi við þekkjum allir alla og það þýðir ekkert að fara neitt en við viljum fyrst og fyrst reyna sína fólki það að það þarf ekki að vera hrætt og að eigi að leita réttarsins ef það er brotið á þeim og hvetjum alla til að koma til okkar ef það er eitthvað og það er náttúrulega fólki er oftar en ekki það er því ég bóði svört vinna með venjulegu kaupi líka og sagt bara að þú ef þú settir ekki við þetta þá skaltu bara að fara út og ef þú færð út þá þarftu bara að fara að finna þér vinnu annars staðar og ef þú finnur hann ekki vegna þess að þá er vinnuveitendi búin að segja að þessi þetta er ekki góður starfsmaður hann allar að leita rétta sinns og það er alls konar svona sögusagnir í gangi sem að vinnuveitendur er að nota og við þurfum að reyna að uppreyta þetta og þá og þá almennt öll brotin á vinnumarkaðanum og þá einna helst gagvart erlendu vinnuafli það situr höllustu fæti gagvart þessu og ekki bara í veitingagerðan heldur öllum gera að yfir höfðu en svona þau brot sem að koma hvað mest núna upp á síðkastið það eru til dæmis þessi þessi vinnutíma brot varandi það að fólk er á jafnaði kaupi það fær greitt sama kaupi fyrir hvern tíma fyrir sig hvort sem að er að vinna á kvöldinu og helgar og ef það ætlar sér að gera eitthvað þá verði einfaldlega bara að þakka niður eða að sparka út og 
sko og leið og það er eins og það sko sé nota með því að þegar fólki kemur til okkar við útskýrum fyrir þeim hvernig launin eiga að vera greitt hverjum tíma þau fara kannski og tala við vinnuveitandan að þá tekur hann svo illa í það hann einfaldlega sparkar þeim út eða tekur þau af öllum vöktum þannig að það fá enga vaktir og þetta er raunin eru þá bara fyrirvalausar uppsagnir og þá þarf fólki að koma aftur til okkar við skrifum fyrir þau bref sendum vinnuveitandanum gerum kröfum það hann leiði þeim að vinna uppsagnafrestin ef ekki að þá gerum við launakröfu ígildi launa á uppsagnafresti og þá í framhaldinu fylgir oftar en ekki því að við þurfum að enda útreikna launi sem að viðkomandi hefur haft svo mánuðin skiptir þá út frá dagvinn og yfirna því það er ekki gerðin inn í ráðningasáninga og svona launakröfur geta hlupið á hundruðum þúsunda fyrir félagsmannin okkar og svona þetta eru þessi helstu brot sem að fólk lendir í á þessum í þessum bransa það er þetta jafnaði kaup og svört vinna sem að fólki plataði út í ég veit ekki alveg hvað ég að fara meira yfir nema þá bara taka spurningar í rauninni sko og úr sala ef einhver hefur spurningar með þetta þá getur náttúrulega svara þeim og jafnframt sko já já, tekur spurningarnar í lokin það er eitt samt sem ég vil kannski fá að bæta við þetta er að hérna að ég hvet fólk eindri til þess að koma í stjættafélagið ef það er einhverjum vafa um eitthvað skiptir engum máli hvað það er það er alltaf opið okkur við getum alltaf svarað þeim spurningum sem að fólk hefur á brústi með vinnuna sína eða og það þarf ekki endilega að vera fyrir því persónu að þú getur líka komið fyrir félagið þinn og upplýst hann ef hann þórir ekki sjálfur en ég ætla að gefa öðrum orðið bara megin Hello My name is Kristina I am very happy to be here Thanks to Eflink, I can. Actually, probably many of you know my story from the newspaper. Uh, what I could say, uh, when I came here to Iceland working uh, for the Hotel Adam, I actually felt uh, like I got some very good uh, opportunity for a new fresh start, for a new life in my dream country. I was quite naive. My English wasn't that good. And... Uh, I actually really uh, lack of the uh, lack of some the conditions of the like to really stand up. I wanna sign some contract. I wanna have it everything's in the proper way. Actually, because I just believed I I I can I believe I, uh, I he was trustworthy, or I don't know how to say it. Um, uh, I just was really really naive, and I didn't really have any experience with working abroad. Uh, so uh, I just tried, I get here uh, for first few months I felt actually really I get somewhere because he, he let me felt that way, give me some responsibility uh, about the business, managing the uh, managing actually all the business of the hotel when he uh, been out of the country on the end, uh, when this something went wrong, because he cheated everywhere where he could, actually, uh, as you know, uh, probably the first problem was about uh, selling uh, tap water for the foreigner. Uh, he, in this time when is that happened, he was, uh, uh, he was uh, in Prague, and when he gets back, he didn't talk to me uh, like for a month, and he blamed me for everything. Uh, in this moment, I was uh, first time I met uh, somebody from Eflink, actually because if something went wrong there, so you come and check up. I actually failed because I did, I knew I in this time I already been here three months and I had some uh, I have some knowledge is exists some union for the workers who can protect me, but I didn't have the faith in the help for me so i tried to protect him and i actually really lied to them because i was i thought he will he would appreciate it because i knew it i'm there on the black uh, as a black job and 
I knew it, if I gonna say the truth, I could make me, make him more problems. So I actually really lied to them. Yes, I'm here just to helping for a holiday, and etc. Uh, I because I just didn't really know how how you guys working, how everything the system here is really built up, and uh, because I believed he could have. A, he could appreciate my, my movement because I tried to protect him. On the end, of course, it wasn't that way. And uh, after the next uh, two, three months, everything went really, really down. And I go by myself to looking for a fling, or actually I got first contact with some lawyer from the ASI, which is so similar, similar institution to you. And they brought me to the fling. This was first time when I met in Kulfur. And I would like to really help you for uh, for the help what I got because actually the system here really works and I really got uh, the lawyer, I got uh, some help with everything. It took time, but that's how, it's, uh, how it is. And on the end, I won. Now, the, as you everyone probably know, the hotel is shut down finally, which is very great victory for me. And I'm very happy for that. Uh, because if not, I believe he will cheat there until now and until for, for, for forever, for sure. Um, I'm, uh, I'm still here and now I keep working one and a half year elsewhere. Actually, I'm, I think I'm happy there. Of course, it's everywhere is something, and, but still my knowledge about uh, rules and how, how, is, how is my rights are quiet, few, it's not still a little bit chaotic. Uh, actually, not a long time ago, I would like really uh, show, this is uh, some prospect magazine from UF Link, which I believe would be very nice if it's everywhere, in every company, and make sure it's not just uh, to get to the managers, but to the workers. Leave it somewhere in the lobby, somewhere in the staff areas, or stuff, um, place like this. Because I believe in many companies where is something wrong, the managers never gonna give it to the workers. But I, I would, I really appreciate the information here are quite clear and very helpful. I got this like two months ago in my new, uh, new place where I'm working and actually I was surprised I would expect uh, it should be there much, much more earlier. The company where I'm working now is Hadro Cafe. It's open two years and contact from Efring start being during this summer. I think it would be maybe better if it's earlier. It, it would be probably better better way. And, but it was very nice because it really get uh, this uh, prospect get to hands to the workers down below, not just in the office, which is the way how I would uh, imagine it should be. Should be. Uh, I don't know what to say more. Maybe. Uh, we will open it for discussion after. Yeah, you. if some questioning, I will. I am happy to answer everything. What you like to know? My imagination is now it's done, so I would pass. <coughs> My name is Alice. Uh, I live in Iceland for around eight and a half years now, and I've been uh, since then like in the restaurant and hotel business, doing different kinds of jobs. Uh, I started as a chef, uh, but now I work in the breakfast service. And uh, I have been through like few places. Uh, at the moment, I'm working in Redison Hotel as international chain, which is actually I'm really happy about that because the more it goes, like you know, the standards are the same in all the world. And when company has the reputation to keep up with, they're really trying to rule everything out. We do have some issues sometimes, but like you know, it's always. Uh, they are trying to keep it all legal, all clear. What is missing, of course, like I really agree, like uh, some information for workers, and it would be great if that would be available in few languages, actually. Closer. Mm -hmm. Is it better? OK. OK. Uh, so because a lot of people are missing out on a lot of information. They are just not educated enough maybe in like, you know, the fields they're comparing with the countries they're coming from. And Iceland in that level, they're really high. They're really protecting like uh, people rights, which is amazing. But people don't get enough of information. And it should be out there, out loud. 
and that would be great if like for example like in our company uh, every year we have something like first aid or it's okay yeah it's like first aid or some trainings which are meant to happen every single year it would be great if there would be seminars in every company annually so basically maybe some updates on the rules or some basic rights if there would be a person who would be going from company to company that would be amazing because people are scared sometimes they don't want any troubles at work maybe they're new and it's just lack of information it's lack of education but in some other job where i was working uh, actually, I did go to Epling. I was pretty new in Iceland. I didn't know what to do, and they did not pay salaries out, which was quite sad. And most of the people sadly were okay with it for many months. Um, that's not fine. And when I went to Epling, I talked through all the troubles which are happening. They helped me even with the resignation letter to do everything legally from my side. I did get my salary, but I know that a lot of people stayed like, you know, without and the company was sued and the case went through the court. I'm not sure how it ended. It was many years ago, but the company was shut down in the end, which is great. I mean, you can count on, on unions, but you need to act and a lot of people are scared of that. That's a big issue. So if there would be some encouragement from unions or just something. And I'm also a union representative of my company now. And I have never in those eight and a half years worked in the company where was a union representative. I never had a person at the company I could turn to, you know, and it's really, really important. And I didn't even know that they're union representatives. So I was always into reading some laws or something more or less, but I never knew about that up until this year, which is not good. <laughs> So if people would get more information, that would be amazing. I think that's pretty much it for me. Okay. Thank you, Alice. So now, Anna. Yeah, so maybe I will uh, put some conclusion on it, uh, on uh, uh, like in the name of uh, the boards of Epling, because uh, yeah, I'm Anna Mariankowska and uh, I'm representing the boards of Epling in here, but also I am a, still a worker of the basic industries. Uh, like uh, I was working a lot in housekeeping, and uh, and right now I'm a worker um, of a restaurant. Uh, and there is a very interesting case because for uh, four months right now um, we are putting claims on our uh, employer and trying to get. Um, the salaries that haven't been paid correctly um, because of the flat, uh, flat hourly wage that was there. And this is also the reason in uh, half of the restaurants in, in Reykjavik um, uh, of underpayment uh, and, uh, and not, uh, not paying like even, even the legal minimum salary. Um, so the cases are complicated. Like I, I've made some some points, uh, some statement as a member of the board, but I think like in these conditions, it's, it's totally unnecessary to read this, uh, and we should uh, be focused right now on like how can we change it and how can we as a union change the, uh, these conditions, but also how we can mobilize us workers. And um, yeah, uh, before I. <laughs> Before I uh, started um, any legal um, any legal activities um, like against my employer, I uh, managed to um, to be a Truna Dermadur, so a union representative. And maybe this is a, a like very important uh, to say right now. Like we can do it uh, in two ways by collecting at least 50% of signatures of uh, the workers at the workplace. Uh, or to uh, organize a gathering of, of uh, every worker, uh, every workers in the workplace. You, you can correct me, <laughs> uh, and by acclamation uh, choose the um, uh, union representative for the for the following time, like the next months. Um, and then the person who is a union representative is legally protected uh, by uh, from uh, firing and can help um, 
himself, herself, and uh, and uh, his or her uh, co-workers. So this is pretty important. Uh, we still don't have a register uh, in the union of the workplaces that have uh, representatives, and this is uh, the thing that we have to change in a few months. It's not so easy, but so we are working on it. Mm. What can I say? Yeah. Uh, so we 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 are like three of us. We are the foreigners who just um, yeah pick Iceland as a uh, as a place to live and as a place to work. And um, it confirms like the, this theory confirms we are coming here without the knowledge about any in institutions that uh, can give us any advice or help uh, in a situation that like we we just realize that something is wrong in the company like uh the working hours are not the same as on a pay slip the, the payment is not enough and we we need to have this knowledge about uh, the institutions that we can just go to and and have some help from them and this is the first step because we as a union we cannot be in every workplace we will trying to uh we are trying to to change this to make uh, more um just not not only controls of the workplaces, but just meetings with the workers and trying to mobilize them, trying to uh, find people who will be um, mm, yeah who who will be up to uh, become a union representative. So a person who have all the knowledge about the basic uh, basic law and um, the things that should uh, should be in the in the contracts of uh, of the coworkers and. Um, and how how the shift system uh should look like or can look like because it's uh yeah it it's always appeared like the the thing that we've got problems uh, with our free time all the time uh if we are working in two to three shifts 14 15 hours a day we don't have a time to think about okay if my working conditions are okay or just uh, take a language courses as uh, we are said to to do like this is this first meet of Iceland that we are coming here and yeah if you learn Icelandic uh, it will be easier for you but still you have have to have time for this um, and uh, also like the good manager and good employer will know that um, the system of the work uh, that they are offering to their workers will affect their lives. And um, if somebody is putting shifts in a system that it's like 12 days in a row, randomly, daily, uh, day shifts and uh, evening shifts, of course, those people have to have uh, this consciousness that our, like the, the employees, yeah, the employees wouldn't wouldn't have time for anything else but work, and um, this is not the reason of our lives. Like, just let let's face it: we are not only workers; we are people who got uh, like some talent, some uh, abilities to take responsibility in the in the workplaces. But yes, but uh, it cannot be uh, overused as it is in um, nowadays. Mm. Maybe we can open uh, right now the place for discussions because for sure, like in the basic jobs, there is a lot of uh, questions we are we are facing every day, and um, let's try to open it and like we can share our experience and, and knowledge. Hi everyone! Oh, oh that's really loud. Hi. Uh, my name is Thorilde Sunna. I'm a member of parliament for the Pirate Party. And I'm wondering, thank you all for your interesting presentations and, and your insight into this problem. What I'm wondering is, what do you think, where do you think is the best place, especially for people that are coming to Iceland, to have this kind of information available, workers' rights, unions, these kinds of things. The first thing I think of is, for instance, the Directorate for Immigration, that if you have to check in to the country, uh, even if you're from Schengen, you have to go there to register. Uh, if there are information there, if they would have um, sort of the obligation to ask people, are you employed, uh, how are your working conditions, uh, have you talked with a union rep, do you get these kinds of wages, do you think that would help or would there be a different place uh, where it would be more useful. And also, do you think 
that, and I'm asking this of all of the panelists, I think you all have a valuable insight on this. Do you think that the media, especially the state media, uh, could help out more with this, for instance, by having information available in more languages and making it easier to get information about your rights? in other languages than Icelandic, because obviously it, it does take a bit of time to learn Icelandic. That's obvious. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I would like to maybe answer. Uh, I think it's very nice idea. It's it's working. Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice idea to have it somewhere in, like in Teoskra or immigration. As I mentioned, this kind of brochure. I've been as well thinking very nice idea would be because I believe you make it every new year. Uh, every every year new one uh, to send it maybe to the foreigners to the and to their homes or to new arrivals to keep it in many languages in the Tioskra and immigration to have it at least in Spanish in Polish in English I actually like this one because it's a one page English one page Icelandic which is quite good because I'm learning Icelandic so it's very nice to have it that way and uh, yes, it would be uh, awesome to have it somewhere where the new arrivals have to go anyway, which is, which is the Tioska or immigration or some kind of uh, institution like that. Uh, about the uh, state media, I'm not that sure. For example, I'm living here almost three years and I haven't watched your TV maybe in the first place in the hotel that was really put in on the, on the big TV. Now I finally live with TV, but I still don't have a your TV, like state TV, and because it's all Icelandic, I would not understand at all. So it's maybe very nice for you Icelanders or maybe for the employers to give it some more uh, proper, uh, I don't know how to say, propagation or some more information uh, for the employers how supposed to should be. Uh, teach the people who really employ the uh, us foreigner to be fair, to be good in some in some dead way. But uh, for the foreigners as, uh, as me or us, I don't think in the media it can uh, really help because many of us really take a years to be able to speak your language. I was thinking, uh, I was thinking a lot about this problem, and also in the union we we were trying to. Is it okay? I'm um, not sure. yeah. uh, we were trying to, um, like, you know, make like find some solution. How to reach the newcomers? How to reach the people who just starting? Uh, they first work uh, because those are not only foreigners but also young Icelanders they don't know nothing about the unions and uh, yeah this is hard this is hard to like we cannot uh, rely we cannot trust employers because this is like you know you, you are getting first employer he's probably uh, responsible for organizing you the f like Kenitala on the beginning and maybe this is the moment, like we were thinking about it, the, the place that you are getting in Italy, but still it, it's coming by a letter or it's coming by an email to your employer. And we don't have this first point of, of reaching uh, new people uh, as a union uh, or as a, you know, people who are conscious about uh, this uh, lack, of, lack, on, lack of information and lack of knowledge. So this is it, and still Iceland don't have any channel for foreigners, uh, for for newses, for media. Like what we've got, Grapevine, that is the only one um, newspaper in uh, in English, but it's still like focused on um, uh, on tourists, or like mostly, mostly yeah. and full of adver advertisements. And um, yeah, we should think about the medium. Maybe so I clarify what I meant with the state media is that uh, that that is a problem that it's only in Icelandic uh, and uh, that perhaps like we have uh, subtitles for people that cannot hear uh, and we could also have subtitles in English and in Polish, for instance. It's something that, you know, we could offer at least for some programs. Like what struck me when we saw this show that has now become quite famous, the uh, Kveikur show, about uh, about how foreign workers are being treated in Iceland. It was all in Icelandic and it took days for it to be s published in, with subtitles. Uh, and I thought that was a bit um, tone deaf, let's say, if we are, uh, you know, 
Uh, but you know, the aim of this show was to uh, really show Icelanders what is happening in the places yeah. that they are not uh, getting in. Because as foreigners, sorry, but we know all the stories. <laughs> sure. Uh, I just think if we're yeah. covering foreigner issues, yeah. maybe we should also enable them to and understand. I'm very, glad, I'm very glad that it was screened. Uh, because right now also, like, maybe consciousness of, of those happenings will be, uh, will be higher and, yeah it no, will be treated more seriously. I have a question regarding gratuity in the restaurant industry. How is that, uh, what, what are the, the, what's the law in Iceland as far as gratuity? Is that something that the guest is giving specifically to the server or the waiter and is it then the waiters? I work in a restaurant where the uh, gratuities are collected and then we are given a trip once a year uh, I'm new here, so this is this will be my first time. Um, but to go on this trip, you also have to pay quite a bit of money to secure your spot on this trip. And this is all of the gratuity that you have yearn, earned over the course of the year. Reglum með þjórfi á Íslandi eru þær að það er náttúrulega eringar reglur. Þetta er hvergi að finna. En við svo leður þetta þjórfi er eitthvað sem að Telur ekki til skatts. Það hefur verið margar rætt um það hvort að ég ekki að borga skatta og setur náttúrulega hluti af launum hjá mörgum og þá ég að greiða skatta þessu. Uh, en það er enga reglur varandi í kjarasamningum hvernig byrja ég að fara með þjórfið sko. Og við getum ekki staðið á einu neinu með það. Þetta er mjög mismund eftir, eftir geirum hvað er verið að borga mikið þjórfið. Núna bara nýlega var ég að heyra til dæmis rútubílstjóra sem er að keira rútur með erlenda ferðamenn þeir eru að fá allt upp undir frá 80.000 og alveg upp undir 200.000 fyrir túrinn með hvort sem þeir eru svissneskir, amerískir eða kynvinskir ferðamenn sem eru með þeim. Það er mismynd eftir þjóðurnum hvað hverjir greiða mikið þjórfi. Það eru kannski ferðir sem taka 4-5 daga og getur þá tekið kannski 4-5 ferðir í mánuðinum. Þá eru þetta aukalega tekir upp á 4-500.000 fyrir suma á þessum bílstjórum. En það hefur aldrei borist til tals um hvernig að fara með þetta og, og Það hefur engin vilja ræða þetta. Þetta er mjög, svona, mjög heitur bolti fyrir marga. Og þetta er raunni bara hvernig fyrir með þjórfið á veitingastöðunum. Það er bara milli starfsmanna og hvernig þeir deila þessu milli sín eða hvernig þeir fara með það. Sko. Það er ekkit sem að stjættafjölun hafa, hafa komið nálagt. Sko. Kannski svarar þetta spurningu? And also I think that uh, what to do with tips should be a collective decision of the staff uh, in, the, um, uh, in the company. Uh, because there are, yeah, there are some ideas that we are collecting uh, tips to one jar and then we are going for a trip meeting or for a, trip par uh, for, for a staff party. Uh, but it can be also the other way, like every day we are we are counting the tips and we are sharing it equally in between uh, between the workers that that were working on this shift right and this is a uh, tips is not the money that belongs to employer and also we have to be conscious uh, about this is uh, something extra untaxed money for our uh, for our work and we should be able to decide what to do with this right um, so I've worked in a good deal of restaurants before and one of the things I noticed is that when people get a lot of pressure from their boss, like they're being, the wages are being stolen or they're being psychologically harassed, that it's often way easier to just try and think that you can get another job or that you feel like you're not going to be in the service sector for that long so you'll just endure it or you'll just go to another job but then you find that like after five years or ten years you're still in the service sector. Um, so I was wondering what kind of thought, if you have experiences that you want to comment on, like people changing jobs to avoid, you know, the difficulty of like defending themselves and what can the union do or what, what has helped you um, when you've been in that situation to kind of endure and fight for your rights? Maybe I can yeah. answer this question. Uh, yeah, this is the easiest way. And also this is the argumentation of, of the bosses. Like, okay, if the salary is too low for you, why don't you change the job? And for those employers answer that, hey, I want to change all the industry. 
starting from your company uh it's not a good answer but yeah maybe there are some people like uh, n not only me but people who wants to try to organize mobilize and uh, change this industry that that would be amazing like you know yeah your salary is too low you are paying me less than minimum and i want to change this because it's not only me, it will be people who are coming after me to the same job, working for the same um, money. So like this is uh, our, um, our, like all of us, this is interest of all of us in Iceland to change these conditions for, for the next people and also to improve. It's not only about foreigners, but also we can see double standards with uh, payments for Icelanders and non-Icelanders. This is also like, very shameful thing and uh, I wish people to be um, paid according to to their experience and uh, their performance at the workplace no matter if they are Icelanders or not. Yep. Well I actually have one myself and that would probably be directed to the two of you Anna and Christina. Mm -hmm. I like I had a unfair employer before and the hardest part for me, like I feel like was already mentioned here, is that I had to still stay at work. So you are suing your employer, but you still are required by law to work. Mm -hmm. And what I have experienced is that like my previous employer tried to intimidate me, like they would, for example, show up at my doorstep and try to like threaten me to, you know, to drop it all and go away. And I'm just wondering how you guys, what is your experience? Like, where did you take the strength from? Like, it was really hard for me, myself, but I'm just wondering how did you, how do you feel like about the, you know, the perseverance that you have to have to actually stand up and, and do that? Yeah, I think your story is amazing and I really admire it and it was like so, useful and so important for all the people working in these businesses to you know just yeah this this lady made a very big step for uh, for the basic work okay so that i get the strength to stand up for my rights i actually feel like i don't have any other chance to if i gonna leave it I will lose, nothing gonna change, everything's gonna stay same and after me will come there many other girls and people who are gonna end up even worse than me and I feel like I'm the right country to do something about it. Thanks to the F-Link I got the supporting, uh, support about the uh, like law and go to trial and things like this and uh, actually the last step what was the most helpful was to really find the strength to go and do the interview which was uh, actually quite a relief for me. The guy who made the interview with me was quite nice. I would actually really thank him uh, any time when I'm gonna see him because uh, he let me feel really comfortable and uh, give me the uh, yeah give me the nice time to open my open up myself. And I felt like I can really trust him. He gonna really make make up uh, make it a really good interview from that, which he really did, and I'm really grateful for that. And thanks to this, it really starts something moving because actually, okay, I won the money like a month before I make the interview, and the hotel was still running. Nothing actually was changing there, and actually something started happening after the article which is quite good and 10 days after they shut down. They took it, the license from him and I am very happy f about it because I believe that's the best way how I could protect the mo more people coming after me. Actually now I'm working elsewhere and I uh, starting feel it a uh, little bit similar way like uh, my employer, I really love the place. I would uh, die for the place. I really love the brand where I'm working now, but still is not really, I can feel it, the double measuring for me and Icelanders or for me and other peoples and uh, it's not really easy and I still didn't really learn quite good how to really manage it to uh, feel, feel, do something about it or feel good. I actually learning and I still really looking for more information where is really the truth and how is the rights actually are. That's why I'm one of the reasons why I'm here and like to keep touch with Applink and get the right information and then really just 
be strong and go talk with the manager and let's see what's gonna happen because I actually don't wanna leave the place because I really like it, but I need to change something there because I don't like it, I feel a little bit like slave because I'm there every day, uh, still don't feel like I'm getting paid enough, I don't have any other time for my life I, and I need to change something on it and I am too, still learning, but just to be strength, strong, you have to be strong. Yeah, or, to, or when you leave, uh, when you are weak, you leave. But that's not the solution, that's just running, you know. Thank you. Yeah, and for me, the strength com, uh, comes from the group I'm working with, because those are amazing people, and I really want them to have, uh, have a safe working conditions and uh, contracts. Uh, I want them to be protected, and I want them to have a fair salary, because they are just wonderful, like, you know. But I'm, of course, like we have to make some sacrifices in here. In one point, you have to sell, or say, okay, I'm not doing it for money because still I'm underpaid, but I'm doing it for, for some case. And also to make some um, instructions for the people how to, uh, how to act in this situation because nobody, nobody will teach us this. And also about the... Um, mm, yeah, we have to protect each other. If we are mobilizing, also we have to organize um, like environment to take care about our mental health, to to take care about all the situations that are are happening around and the way how we are treating in the process mm -hmm. of making things better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, any more questions from the audience? No. Okay. So, yeah. Like, um, yeah, I will speak in English. My name is Madera, and I wanted to ask um, all of you girls, like, uh, you're working here, as I understood, eight years. And then, and, um, like, you probably had more situations when you are, like, you need to read some information, and everything is in Icelandic. And, like, to try to find some person who can, like, translate it in the best way, and, like, how you... Like, did you ever have a situation when you are like signing something that it's in Icelandic, but the first thing you are reading in English, but you sign the thing which one is in Icelandic? So how you will like, like this act is to illegal. this? Like because like I don't know really if it's true. Is this is the same? I can read in English, but like the Icelandic part, is it like, is it your rights? You are just signing. But did you After, ever had something mm -hmm. like that? After some time being in here, uh, that was too late, of course, for like the first mistakes uh, uh, for me in the in the workplaces. But somebody gave me a very good advice: don't sign anything and let them sign everything. Even if you've got contract in front of yourself, you can tell your employer and don't be afraid of it. You can tell, okay, I will consult it with the member of my union, like with the representative in my union, and I will come to you tomorrow because this is important thing. And maybe it was like that, like you showed that uh, I cannot trust you uh, in the last payment of mine, and you know I have to check this contract. And don't, like, don't be scared about it. If uh, if the employer will act, okay, so okay, you you can pack your things and you are leaving this job. Uh, yeah, but if if you are working more than two weeks, you've got some term of notice. And also, but this is the knowledge that we don't have from the beginning. Yeah, oh, we we can consult everything before signing, and this is our uh, our right. Like you know, this is the only thing that we have to remember. 